This bathroom has a couple of challenges. The first one is that it has two sinks, one on the left, one on the right, and those uh, sinks affects directly the drawers below. And uh, the client was asking for the drawers to have a little bit more uh, storage. The bathroom by itself is, is really small. So that's the first one. And the second one is that uh, you can see the detail at the very bottom, like uh, decorative pieces of wood at the very bottom, at the toki level. So that forces the doors and the drawer faces of the cabinets to be flush with the face of that uh, tokic detail at the very bottom. So in, um, in other words, we have to leave the boxes 7 8 you know, between 7 8 and 15 16 depending on the thickness of the doors, back from the face of, of the tokic. Uh, so those are the two challenges and I'll, I'll explain here how we address those ones. When we think about cabinets, we always think in a boxes mode. And what that means is, as you can see, the tokic uh, in this picture, it just, uh, when it's finished, it looks uh, just like a box. And then you also see the uh, CAD layout of the lowers, they also look like individual boxes. So that gives us a little bit more easy time to build everything and also to install everything because basically it turns into putting boxes together at the end. Uh, the final result from the outside is that it looks really nice and it doesn't look like boxes but the process if uh, if we can make it feel like boxes it, it gets easier uh, for whoever is uh, building it and also at the installation level it, it also comes easier just to uh, screw those boxes together and make everything come alive so when we install the tokic you can see over here i have a uh, two shims on the back of the tokic kind of pushing the, the base, pushing the tokic away from the wall and that is because I do need that uh, 7 8 to 15 16 reveal from the face of the tokic to the face of the cabinet and then when I when I put my level against the wall I notice uh, that the wall was leaning in a little bit so if I don't do this, by the time I put my cabinets on top of the tokics, uh, the cabinets will be uh, surpassing the face or maybe it will be only half inch away from the face and that will be bad because the, then the doors or the drawer faces are not going to be flush with the face of the tokic. So that's the first thing that I put attention to. And, uh, and also you can see the pipes uh, coming off the wall those pipes are the ones that are going to be affecting the drawers uh, for the sink. I do have drawers uh, that I'm going to have to notch, but I also have a uh, simple formula to figure out ahead of time how much uh, we have to cut, how much uh, notching we're going to be doing to the drawers in order to make it work with the um, with the piping and, and the drain and, you know, the the pipe trap that comes from the sink. The uh, formula that is been working for us is if you take the face of the cabinet and go back seven inches, that will give you roughly two inches of clearance between the pipe of the drain and your drawer that, that has worked with us uh, many times. And I know the sink can be install a little bit forward and we don't install the sinks but that's why I, I allow the, the two inches of you know play room if uh, it turns out that uh, the uh, sink installer installs it uh, probably one inch forward or half inch forward 
uh, there is a limit that they can go forward because uh, they, they have to have a little bit of uh, countertop space from the face of the sink to the edge of the countertop and then the other formula is if you can measure the piping beforehand and when you are doing your drawings or planning uh, for your cabinet you can go an inch and a half to the left of the water pipe and also an inch and a half to the right of the other water pipe that will also give you you know about an inch of clearance inch and a quarter of clearance uh, from the water piping to the uh, drawer uh, walls and for the bottom drawer uh, many many times we don't have to do anything to that one but if we do I only make a, a, a small um, hole saw notch on the back just so when they open the drawer they uh, the piping clears uh, from you know hitting the, the, the drawer that, that has worked also for us now I was about to do the uh, filler and uh, on this one I'm, I'll explain how I did it uh, it's not a safe way to do it but I've been doing it for a long time uh, there you can see the line that I mark for the filler that goes on the left and this is a second floor installation and the bench is downstairs so I'm gonna go ahead and apply in this method over here I do it by freehand uh, and uh, I was joking that um, it was Friday and the body knows it so <laughs> I will I was uh, I was gonna cut it uh, I, I actually did cut it over here so I use my skill saw with a vacuum uh, connected to it and uh, I pick my piece and I hold it really strong and I tilt my saw all the time I, I do it freehand and I go and cut about one eighth of an inch away from the line and uh, it is MDF so it, it is uh, relatively soft I don't let it so hit the, the cabinet you know, obviously and so the main key over here is not to let the saw uh, kick you back and I hold it with my left hand you know, until it is completely ripped and I have the piece and I go ahead and also use my uh, belt sander is uh, a small one and sorry about the uh, movement of the camera I was having a another guy uh, trying to follow me but uh, the, it appears that it's not a, a very good idea uh, you know shaking hands <laughs> so um, here I am uh, sanding the leftover uh, about a 116 uh, of wood that I'm sanding and I do it all the way through until I have the piece ready to go back in and install it I always try to leave my fillers very tight and uh, I also always use a block uh, as you see over here to tap it in and uh, not having the problem that it blows the edge a little bit and just keep uh, doing it little by little and then as soon as I feel that it's uh, completely flush with the face of the cabinet then I proceed to use my um, countersink it's a taper uh, countersink number 8 I believe it is and uh, I proceed to do a couple of uh, screws sometimes two sometimes three depending if I have a top rail that uh, doesn't allow me to do one at the top then I had another filler over here on the side that closes the gap between the wall and the uh, end of the cabinet that end of the cabinet has a finish finish end and the space uh, as I say before it was uh, really tight so that's why uh, that one is having a, a filler over there then I proceed to put a few screws then measure from the face of the cabinet uh, to the uh, back where where the filler was going to be then 
mark from the inside to where I wanted the screws to be and after that I uh, put two or three more screws to hold the piece in, in place and that did it that uh, is now holding the piece and I apply some caulking to that piece between the wall and the cabinet and uh, that was it thank you for watching